Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as like you know, Ti's work in Atlanta, he's a legend, and I wish other people would understand that. This is the point I wanted to get to. I think that I understand why he didn't accept the Buster Rhymes thing. And I think you and I have talked about this offline. I think that him versus Busta Rhymes in a versus really doesn't do much for him. You understand what I'm saying? It's kind of a lose-lose situation for him. Well, think- he can't win that argument with the heads, for one. Like, like all the hip-hop heads are going to side with Busta. But he's so- never been in that arc. Busta's never been a part of his argument. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, like, I, I understand where he was coming from trying to go with 50 because they came out around a similar time. Uh, and, you know, he was always trying to achieve, from what I understand and what he used to say and what Pharrell said, he wanted to be the Jay-Z of the South. And, you know, as much as I love Busta, Busta's not really thought of in those ways, right? I think Aluda and Busta might make a little bit more sense. But as far as, like, all of the things that that T.I. has covered subject matter wise and all that, I think he probably wanted somebody who fit that a little bit more. I don't think that him and Busta really make sense outside of the, you know, the fact of just challenging one MC to another. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But see, the problem that T- Tip has in this situation is he doesn't want to go against anybody in the South. He wants to go against somebody in New York. And there's nobody else really in New York left for him. Other than 50, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's it's nobody. I mean... I mean, he... Look, even him bringing up Pusha T's name. I mean, I, I don't... I don't want to see that. I, I but I, I would rather I see him and Wayne. I don't think that's a good stylistic matchup, yeah. and I don't like that for Pusha T just because of Tip's wide-reaching audience exactly. about this whole social media thing that we just expressed. Because exactly. Pusha, because actually Pusha and Wayne, like I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, Mike. I've been a big Pusha fan since like literally like the jump, and he just started letting us into his life when he got married and had a kid. Like he just started letting us in like a little bit. You know, Pusha's uh, very sneaky though. I mean, because we know Pusher from Clips and a lot of his solo run and everything right after Clips. But we start thinking about all the records that Pusher's been on oh, in current everything. times. It's like, you know, he, he can really he can really sneak up on somebody, to be perfectly honest. But He's I think, honestly, man, I mean, the only matchup for T.I. for real that makes sense is just Wayne, man. It's got to be Wayne. And I don't even think Ross makes too much sense for him either. Um, yeah, it, it's just got to be him and Wayne. Because you're not going to get the, the Jay-Z and Nas, and you're not going to get Ye. I honestly feel like, and I've said it on the show before, I think Kanye is probably the most unbeatable and unpredictable person in a versus. Uh, we're about to pick our 20 Nas records against um, the Rap Roundtable's 20 J records. So I think that Jay and Nas are the only people for each other to be perfectly honest um yeah so i I don't think that ti is there with his catalog but i do think that you know if he select properly him and wayne could give us a good one wayne just has so much stuff Mm -hmm. i think he should have accepted the buster rhymes one though but and, and i think he still can right but i don't know what that does for him what does that do for ti's uh legacy if he beats Buster Rhymes in this, or seemingly beats Buster Rhymes in this, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily know what that does. But also, let's keep in mind, like he challenged fifty. You know, so he it's did. like when we talk about him ducking Buster Rhymes, well, it's like, well, did fifty duck Ti? Because like that's something that's not being expressed. We just got to express all sides. Okay, fairly. we got to express all sides. Yes, it, it appears that fifty did duck Ti. He didn't right. accept the challenge. And see, the thing is, 50 also wasn't one of those people out there who said he wasn't going to do a versus. Because he expressed that he wanted to do a versus against Luda, uh, Snoop, um, who I forgot who else. But he put some names out there, possible versus. So he was down with the versus idea. I guess he feels like, or he wanted to... um, Wanted to portray in public that T.I. is not on his level. Now, that's not the case. 
I think well, Fifty and Ti would make a good one though, because Fifty got some. He got some heat. He got some heat. Well, that well, that's the thing. So look at it through Ti spectrum has a legendary Southern hip hop MC. When you have somebody like Fifty who ducks him and then Busta Rhymes name surfaces, it's like that kind of looks like the okey doke if you ask me too. That's why I've always kind of been funny like that. It's like how did the Busta Ti thing? even become a thing when it was supposed to be about T.I. and 50, which makes all the more sense in the world. So for me, if I'm tip, I'm looking at that. Well, it's like, oh, well, they send in, they send in me into a fight that they know that I can't win when they do that. That's the setup. It, and does, so it might, does come across as that. But I think right? that came because he called New York out. Well, Mike, well, if he is, bring the best person. Like, if he's People the most are here person, saying 50 would crush T.I. Uh, K. Thompson says 50 wouldn't win against the game. Mm. He definitely wouldn't win against the game. T.I. versus the game came to my mind, too. I mean, how about this? That would 50, be fun to watch. That would. 50's heat is really top-heavy, Mike, and I don't know how it plays out over the course of a full 20. Like, them first them first 10, yeah, he might fade tip. Then last 10, I don't think so. How do you think? I mean, I guess it would be all about how they line it up. How do you think the window shopper would play in 2022? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, how's Winston going to play? Because, and, and and here's what I'm saying too, Mike. Like, Tip is actually one of the few guys that has a record that can go up against in the club. Like, he's got what you know. Like, he's got a monstrous record. I mean, he played what you know. Then you know. I mean, I'm sorry, not what you know. He played in the club or something. T. I could go blurred lines. He could go. Uh, My love with Justin Timberlake. Yeah, he's got you know, places to go. He, yeah. He's Mike. He's been all over the place. He's done. He's done stuff with everybody. He's done stuff with major, major people too. Mike. And he was spitting too. That's the important part. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying, Mike. On most of the stuff that Tip Smash is on, because he knows the moment, Mike. Some of the biggest stuff is some of his best performances. That's gonna play well in a verse. Because well, you, you can know, play his biggest stuff, and he's still snapping on there. I'm gonna say this, and I guess we can move on. Or I'll, I'll give you the last word, but. I mean, T.I. is just going to have to go out there and um, do a versus because I think that this suits him very well. People need to be reminded of what he has done musically because when he dropped that Libra Scale album a couple years back, it was a good album and people act like it didn't happen. So when that starts happening, you got to start reminding people, you know, of your legacy and what you've done musically. And and I think a versus is a, a great platform for him to do it. He just has to find the right person to do it with, man. I, I don't know what happened with that whole Jeezy thing with a last minute, you know, switch with Gucci, but that could have done it too. And he would have blown Jeezy out respectfully. You don't think so? I didn't love Jeezy's track selection. Like for me, for Jeezy, it would be about the track selection. But like, I'm funny about his stuff. Like I told you, my, my yeah. favorite Jeezy track book is Trapper Die too. Yeah, my favorite Jeezy no, stuff is the, you know, underground stuff that you did. Right, that's you what know? I'm saying. Like, yeah. like, I don't even know how much album stuff I would get to after I got done playing the Trap or Die and Trap or Die 2 stuff. Then I would go, like, get an album stuff like Who Dat. Uh, I don't get really like album. those records like that. I don't. Oh, I like you don't the, like Who Dat? I like the, um, shoot, the one he did with... Um, you don't like Who Dat? It's cool. I mean, like I said, I like, I do this, you know, Dang. you dig, get your oh, mind that? right. Mike, Mike, who, who, who that's like an eternal ATL club banger, Mike? Like, that's, that's <laughs> always going to play. <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. But, oh, um, oh, no, I can't, I don't agree. Love it. 